Hey guys, what's up? This is False Bulls123, and I think this is day, um, oh lordy, 44? I have no idea. I'll just, like, you know, you'll find out when you see the, like, you know, the end cap. Anyway, guys, today I was going to rap for you a little, but I was visiting my mom, and I thought it might be just, like, you know, a lovely time to take a walk and just shoot the shit. And, yeah. So, I have been trying to um, do a lot more reading during the quarantine, just because it's something to do, it's something relaxing, and I'm having fun with it so far. I just finished um, Neil Gaiman's American Gods. It was this just huge, gigantic book. It was ridiculous. And, oh, it was so good. Like, I, like you know, um, I did... Read, like heard about the book. I used it a lot for inspiration for my D&D campaign, so I really enjoyed it. But like you know, now that I actually have like read it in entirety, like you know, there was just so many references and lore bits, and it's basically like Rick Riordan for adults, and it just works so well. It was a like it was a really good book. Um, so I've moved on. I have a new audiobook now that I'm listening to. And that's Turn of the Key, I believe, by Roof Wake, or something like that. And I originally listened to another um, book by her. It was The Woman in Cabin 10, which I did not like. It just I DNF that, but I've been listening to um, this one for the last two hours while I was doing yard work. I've been really into that lately. I've just been, like, you know, clipping Blackberry Vines, listening to, like, you know, an audio book, and it works, actually. It's a lot less tedious, like, you know, when you actually have something to focus on besides clipping blackberry vines all day. <laughs> so I like it. Um, I'll just give you, like, you know, talk about it for a little bit because I was actually really enjoying the story. Basically, it's about a nanny named Rowan and it's told epistologically, which is some of my favorite styles of storytelling. And so it is the bridge that basically she is writing a series of letters to this lawyer and trying to explain like you know that she did not kill this like child and would just like a woo intrigue why like why is there a murder huh huh and so it's basically like you know she's gone past the whole like hey I'm in prison and I'm sad to just sort of like you know flashback scene we're still like in the letter apparently though she has like stopped like re though it's much more like immersed now into the actual story and pretty much, like, you know, give me a second. She's, like, you know, just got done with an interview for, like, the position. And so she's, like, you know, learning about the family, meeting the children, and all of that. It's very gothic, which I was not expecting. It definitely has some very strong gothic vibes to it. Um, a little bit of the research that I've done about the book... It does look to be an interpretation of Henry James' Turn of the Screw. So, like, Turn of the Key, Turn of the Screw, like, hee hee, I get it. Like, a little bit of that, like, name's the same dealio. And I love it. Like, um, so the house she's in, instead of it being, like, very Victorian, very old and musty, it's, like, a Victorian-style house, but the inside is just this, like, super crazy, like, smart house. There's, like... Everything's like, you know, automated and I'm like a woo because two things I really enjoy horror wise or thriller wise is um, techno thrillers. I love stuff like that. That's one of the things that it's like mo made movies like Cam and Unfriended so good was its technological aspects to it. And I love gothic literature. Like, you know, you throw a little bit of that Poe in there, you throw a little bit of that Lovecraft shit, and I'm like, mm, that's sexy, that's hot. And I'm really enjoying the story. Um, so, the characters are pretty interesting. It's narrated by um, Emojin Church. I always want to say Emojin Heap, but I'm pretty sure she doesn't do voice acting. <laughs> and um, Emojin Church is also the voice actress for The Moon in Cabin 10 for um, the audiobook. So, it appears that like she likes to have that woman to be like you know her kind of go-to for the voice of the character i think that's kind of cool but there's like that consistency of tone for her books i like her voice in general it's um very british 
because I believe Ruth is, or Ruth Rake, whatever her name is, I believe she is British. So, like, it's nice to have that sort of tone. I don't know what dialect it is because I'm not, I'm an American, and so I really can't tell Kent from London, so to speak. But I'm sure somebody in the comments knows what accent she has. It um, reminds me a lot of the um, voice actress from Within the Wire season one. Because she has a very similar tone and it's just that very soft-spoken British accent. And it's lovely to listen to. There's also just this really fun scene where like she gets porridge on her shirt so she's like going to like wash it out in the sink and so she's like in her bra and garters or whatever. And then like the handyware walks in and she got like porridge all over them titties. And so he's just like my bad fam. And I've seen enough rom-coms to know that means they'd be fucking later. Like, so obviously like she kind of has the hops for the handyman. So it's like, ooh, a little like, you know, romance angle up in there. So I like, you know, that they're having some characterization for her so that she isn't just walking around a creepy house with some creepy ass children and being spoopums. Like she's going to get dicked down somewhere later in the in the book and it's like it's nice that like you know they've like characterized that enough and maybe i'm wrong like you know maybe mr awol handyman over here is just like one for the lads but who knows i think like you know rowan the maid's gonna get some hard word to scrub winky at ya what else have i been um, reading lately because it's kind of like you know where the vlog's going um been reading sister age by MFK Fisher, she's like a food writer. She's pretty good at that. Really enjoy it. It's a uh, memoir that she was writing in her old age. And I don't know, like it's good, but there are some like, you know, a bit, there's some chapters that are a bit dry and a bit dull for me. But I think her style is pretty good. The only thing that like, you know, kind of disappointed me about the book is that MFK is like this really renowned food writer. That's how I first heard about her. She's like supposed to be like the best novelist ever or something. And I'm like, okay, you gotta read this now because you keep like having them up people. And her work is really good. Um, they mentioned that like, you know, how a lot of the people that I've heard describe her, or at least the one book I was reading that was talking about her, discusses how she sort of talks about food in context, about the people she eats it with and the places she visits. And I can feel that. Um, another great book that sort of combines sort of the whole food writing and travel was Under the Tuscan Sun, that's another memoir. But um, I'm not reading that, it just reminded me of it because of the similar themes. But pretty much, I'm trying to think. Yeah, um, one thing I thought was really interesting was she definitely has some background in France because she'll reference like a lot of French words that I wouldn't know. Like not as a cook, but just like, you know, there's a lot of French language she uses as vocabulary. I think Pottinger was one, which was like, I don't even remember what it meant. I forgot already. Yeah, but she has some good vocabulary, but I'm trying to think. Oh, there's like this one scene which I thought was so funny. And I'm probably the only one that thought it was funny because I'm a nerd. But she's talking about this meal she had in France where she had a tarte apricot or an apricot tart, right? But she defines, but she calls um, the, the meal she had, like the entree, a scallop of veal and I thought that's really interesting because if you asked me to call what well, I would call it dish I would call it veal scampolini after the Italian term for it but she had this sort of romanized term for it even though she used like a very French phrase tat de epicot and so I think it's interesting that she had a view of these dishes from a French perspective but the idea of the veal scampolini was from a she didn't know the she didn't either know or use the Italian term for it, which is the originator of the dish. And I thought that was uh, really interesting because it's, it's, like, it's, it's fascinating like, what you call dishes. Or at least I think that's fascinating. Like maybe I'm like a weird nerd who's like, wow, Ryan, who the Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Um, wow, I am all Butterfingers today. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that my microphone was in. <laughs> it's like, wow, Ryan, you're like such a fucking nerd. Who cares if it's called Veal Scampolini? But I just thought that was like an interesting piece. Um, I have another book that I was like open called 
The Lilac Girls. It was like a historical fiction novel. And I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. I didn't get really too far into it, and I'm probably going to have to, like, you know, put it down. But it's definitely on my um, TBR for at least, like, never later on in the year. I'm trying to think. Uh, my friend Chris, like, so he's been, like, saying, Ryan, why haven't you seen, like, Neon Genesis Evangelion yet? And I'm just like, well, first of all, that's hard to say, so that's why. And yeah, I just haven't really watched it because, like, you know, he's super into it. It's, like, one of his favorite animes, and I've just been, like, a little bitch and not listen to it. And I think we all have, like, that one thing that our friends are always just, like, you need to watch it. It's, like, the best thing ever. And then you don't. And then, like, why haven't you watched it? Don't you love me? And I'm just, like, of course I do. I just haven't watched it yet. Be patient. Jeez, are the fucking horses. <laughs> Finally watched it, right? It is so good. And I'm just, like, I am sorry. Like, I will prostrate myself and apologize for sleeping on this fucking jet because... Oh, uh, it's like uh, made by Guy Gags, the animation's fucking beautiful, it's got some fun little side settings, it's dark and edgy, and the characters are like, fun, but they definitely, like, a lot of them have like, so much like, is there some secrets in there, and it's just like, tell me your secrets, bitch, and so it's like, definitely something I need to be watching some more of, and I'm thinking, dang, like, there is no reason why it should be like, this good, and now I feel bad for like, never watching it so down in the comments wrote me for being a fake fucking weeb because you know i'm a fake fucking weeb and yeah what else have i been doing um i've been trying to bullet journal a little bit more lately because i have so much fucking time in my life i've been playing more minecraft that's pretty fun i'm going to do more videos of that in the future hopefully they can get the uh, minecraft server up and running again because I remember that we mentioned it a bit earlier that like no one's been able to get on recently and I want to get back to like my home base <laughs> at least so that I can at least just like you know film it and show you besides that the only other thing I really want to talk about and I'm sorry if there's like all this background noise because I'm right by the road now is probably I'm going to start like you know folding my weekly vlogs into my daily vlog schedule just because I don't have enough time in my fucking life. I have so much time, but I don't have enough time for that even. To be filming like, you know, eight videos a week and editing and publishing them. So it's just going to like, you know, my weekly vlogs are going to just be part of my daily vlog cycle. Cause half of the daily vlogs I do are worth it. Or like at least good enough content for a weekly vlog. Like my tag videos, like a lot of my videos I could have vlogged weekly, so I might actually make take like a little bit of a hiatus like after this quarantine just to like, you know, cool down, sort of like, you know, revitalize my creative juices and stuff. Hopefully it will end soon. I have, a f I've heard like a few tweets from the grapevine that it might be ending sometime around May and I can go back to work. And that'd be nice because I'm so sick of like, you know, being quarantined. But of course, like, you know, I'm worried about, like, you know, the virus, like, you know, redoing shit, and it sucks. Anyway, guys, um, do let me know how you feel about, like, you know, my vlogs. If they're good, if you enjoy them, shit like that. As always, um, yeah, I'm going to just wrap this up. Hey, okay, wait, you remember to go to my channel, like, comment, and subscribe. I want to hear from you. And, like, feel free to share this video with your friends. This one is just kind of me like, you know, vlogging and being a fucking weirdo and just kind of shooting the breeze. But yeah, if you have a friend that like, you know, say, hey, this is kind of quintessential like false bulls. Here you go. Here's a video of me walking down the street talking. Anyway, guys, I'm going to shut up now and this false bulls went free and I'm signing off.